Hello everybody, um, my name is Natalie Phillips. I am an independent lymphedema nurse specialist, um, a senior trainer at the Lymphedema Training Academy, and I am clinical manager at Hagnam Healthcare. I'm here today with our Margaret Sneddon, who is chair of the BLS, who will be moderating this session on behalf of Legs Matter. Um, just a little bit of background about Haddenham Healthcare. For over 20 years now, we have been supplying products and services to clinicians and their patients to help manage um, lymphedema, chronic edema and venous disease. And today, I'm really proud to be here supporting the Legs Matter campaign as on behalf of our company to talk to you about hints, tips and tricks for donning and doffing compression therapy. Um, when I started putting this session together, I was thinking about, well, why this session? And I thought it's really, really important. It's as much as it's not a fancy um, thing to talk about, we don't give enough emphasis to how compression can be put on or taken off as well as tolerated throughout the day, each day. And quite often as a clinician, I know that when I am suggesting compression products, that this patient is going to be in them probably for the rest of their lives. So we really should be taking the time to get it right. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping that you'll find this session useful. I'm gonna talk through some hints and tips. And hopefully this can help you with your own application of your garments or for the clinicians that are watching, give you some pointers to be able to give to your patients to make their compression journey a little bit more bearable. So before we talk about donning and doffing, we just really need to revisit a little bit about distinguishing between the different types of compression that is used in the management of venous disease and lymphedema. And those two types of compression form either circular knit garments or flat knit garments. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm mentioning this, but you'll, you'll see as, as we move on sort of through the session that we should take into account the type of garment that we're prescribing because it will impact the patient's ability to, to apply that garment. So you'll see from the image on the left um, of your screen that we've got circular knit garments. Now circular knit garments are basically, as they say, knitted circular on a tube. They are seamless garments that tend to be the quite thin and more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so you could liken them to, to sort of those thick um, tights that you see we're all gonna be wearing actually as the winter months progress. Um, the thing about circular knit to remember though is that it's, it has high elasticity in the garment. So the garments do stretch um, and the, what will happen with that stretch is that if anybody is prone to getting slight rebound swelling, that that rebound, you will rebound into those garments. Those garments may not be strong enough to hold the edema. So at that point, we then go for a flat knit garment. Now, flat knit garments, again, are knitted on a flatbed machine. They have a seam up the back because they are then stitched together. So there is less stretch within a flat knit garment. They're more rigid and they're better at holding edema or where we've got poor shape. So how does this relate to donning and doffing? Well, let me show you. So I've got here two garments. One's a circular knit and one's a flat knit. If I pop my hands into this circular knit garment, you will see that it really does stretch. But when I stretch that garment, that elastic is trying to constantly pull back in. So it's putting some pressure on my hands, pulling back in like that. So when you're trying to don these garments, what you'll find if you've, if you've got reduced hand strength, that actually it can be quite uncomfortable as it's trying to pull back in. Um, whereas if you use 
a flat knit garment, a flat knit garment, as much as it's more rigid, it actually maintains its position as you're trying to put it on the limb. So the myth that circular knit garments are actually more easy to get on than flat knit garments is not true. Um, so where there is issues with donning and duffing, I would tend to always go for a flat knit garment. Yes, they're a little bit thicker um, and less aesthetically pleasing, but it's that balance between aesthetics and the ability to don and doff. So now that we just understand that difference, we can talk about sort of general tips for getting compression on and off. Now, again, it's that before we even prescribe compression, we should be thinking about, okay, what, what can you do on a daily basis? Are you able to bend down to do your shoelaces up? If you're able to bend down to do your shoelaces up, then you might not have issues with donning and duffing. Um, has a patient or got issues with grip strength and being able to grip something to, to pull it on? Um, has the patient got delicate tissues? If there's delicate tissues, then again, we might think about using different types of compression to, to protect those tissues. But to start, what we'll do is we will look at application, just general application for those people that don't have any problems with ability to bend or grip strength or delicate tissues. So we would always say to get yourself into a comfortable position, you can either raise your leg and pop it on a footstool or on a bed or leave it on the floor. I have a leg here prepared and I've got a circular knit garment here that I'm just going to pop on. Now, one of the things I would always say to my, my patients is, okay, if you can, just turn your hosiery inside out just to the heel. So you can see I've got my fingers in at the heel and I'm just going to turn it inside out to there. That allows you to just get the foot applied because... The one thing that's quite difficult with compression is, is actually just getting it onto the foot. Once you've navigated the heel, um, you then are able to, to get that compression up the leg. So I'm just going to pop that on. You may want to pop your leg up onto your knee and you can see I've got that on to over my heel. However, when I have put it on, I've actually gone a little bit too far. So always make sure the heel is positioned in the heel part of the garment, that you redistribute your fabric slightly so that you've got that comfortable application on the foot. And here, I am literally just going to pop it up, walk it up the leg to just ensure that it then as a below knee garment is sat two fingers below my popliteal crease. Quite often we will see people that will pull their hosiery on and pull it and overstretch it that actually it comes up above the knee. We don't want that. This is the thing with circular knit garments, they do stretch more. So if they do that, we advise that you just roll it back down, redistribute the fabric as such, making sure there's no creases and no twisting as you apply, because if you twist as you apply, it's actually really quite uncomfortable. So um, that is um, just donning for somebody that, that has, doesn't have any issues. Now, where you've got patients that do have issues with that ability to bend or, or problems with grip strength, then there are many, many applicators available. Um, and you'll see from the images that there are those that have handles um, and you would spread the hosiery over the actual frame and be able to use the handles to pull that hosiery up onto your, your legs. Those are really good where you've not got the ability to bend. Um, and again, you do still need some grip strength to be able to pull and distribute the fabric over the frame. 
The other types are those that use a slidey sheet material. And again, they allow friction um, to apply the garment onto the limb. You may use a combination of both. So applying sliding material over your leg whilst putting the garment on over a frame may just make it really easy for you to get on. One of the other things that's really great for those people that um, have issues with donning and is, I think it should be a staple in everybody's toolbox, are gloves and grip mats. So you will see here, on the floor I've got a grip mat so that grip mat again allows some friction for me to readjust my compression on the foot and slide it on a little bit better and the gloves now gloves again there's every company does their own variation of gloves or you could go to the garden centre and get some and they, the gloves that have just the little bubbles on their thing, on, on their palms actually allow for better grip of garments as well. So what I will do is I will just show you donning with um, an applicator and how we do that using the grip mat as well. So again, I've got my garment here. I am still going to fold it back on itself to the heel. And again, where there's delicate tissues, we have to be careful with how we apply our hoser. Now this is just um, one of the slidey applicators and you actually, it can be used on open or closed toe garments. You would slide your foot in, she says. Probably best to pop the applicator on prior to putting your gloves on, she says. There we go. So you pop your foot into here. This strap just does up around the back of the leg. And you can see there's that Velcro there. So, Again, you may need to pop your foot up onto a stool um, so that you can just get it on over the foot. Using the gloves helps me grip and I can just pop that onto there. Just getting it up over the heel. Like so. Again, you could use your grip mat to slide that through. Now, especially where you've got delicate skin, don't pull the hosiery. You literally walk it up in stages. Using your gloves to grip it allows you to actually grip that hosiery there. Take it up to there. Make sure your foot is positioned properly. I'm going to just undo this and then pull out the applicator there. So, redistribute the fabric on your foot. Make sure that it's not actually ca causing friction on the toes, that it's gonna make you sore. And make sure that your heel is actually positioned into the heel part. And again, you can then just finish off popping that on there, that it sits comfortably just below. As you can see, that still really requires some ability for moving. Um, so it may be that you do choose to use a frame as well as one of those slides. Now, in terms of getting your compression off, um, there are many doffers that can be used that have a handle that you can actually pop down the back of your leg and it actually slides the compression off allows you to slide it off over the foot. There are, um, again, you're able to use this kind of device. Some of these devices are donners and doffers, which just give you that little bit of friction to be able to 
take the hosiery off and slide it off. And again, using your grip mat, the grip mats are absolutely fantastic. They're just giving you that little bit of a help. So with this, we just fold the compression over and it helps to slide off. And again, you can use your grip mat to get that off without having to bend down too much. So some useful tips there with being able to just get that on and off, but do have a look at all the applicators. There is loads available and there is something to suit everybody. Now, where people are struggling and they don't tolerate either garments, um, whether that's flat knit or circular knit garments, you may choose to prescribe a, an adjustable Velcro wrapping device. Again, every company does Velcro wrapping devices. Um, they are really, really useful where somebody doesn't tolerate compression garments, traditional compression garments, or where there are wounds or where there is edema that still really needs reducing. There are many differences between wraps. And again, one company's wrap may not suit one patient. So you need to know, again, what's out there and what's available because there is something for everybody. The differences between the wraps is that you've got some that are interlocking, there's some that are overlapping, some that are made as single knitted bands, others that are made as laminated overlapping bands, others that had come in one piece, have liners in them. They're very, very different. So there'll be various applications for, for each wrap. So it's really important that you look at each um, manufacturer's instructions for use on how to apply their wrap. Either way, they allow for autonomy. Um, they allow for our patients to be able to reapply them to take them off to have a shower and then pop them back on or to do skincare. For us as, as lymphedema practitioners, we are very, very, um, very much advocate daily skincare at least because of how the tissues can become very, very dry. So when you've got somebody that's in a bandage and that bandage is left in situ for up to a week, then we can't do skincare. So wraps really allow us to improve skin and, and look after the skin and do that skincare. The other thing as well with wraps is that they actually allow the patient, um, with, with a bandage, what you'd find is that that bandage would start to lose its pressure within about two hours. So with a wrap, you can actually tighten it up and get that pressure back on to continue to reduce that limb. So they're really, really good for that. Um, as I say, there's different wraps available but I'm just going to show you one of them and you can see again where that may fit in for, for your patient. So here we have one of them which is easy wrap and we, it comes most of the wraps that will come with um, liners. Now there's different types of liners. There are those liners that you can use where you would combine a leg piece with a foot piece or like I've got here, there are liners that you can have where patients want to be able to put their shoes on. There's compression in the foot, 50% compression at the ankle, and then actually no compression in the liner on the leg, which is where your wrap would sit. So these may be easier to get on if you've got somebody that is, um, needs that level of compression on the foot. So you can see here, just going to pop that on onto the foot, sit it in at the heel. I have little feet. Redistribute my fabric just on the foot there. And then it just sits further up the leg. And you can clearly see the changes in levels of compression there. Now, with this wrapping device, this is an overlapping wrapping device. So it's got a 50% overlap like you would with a bandage. So there are seven different bands on it. And before applying, what I have done is I have folded back the Velcro tabs just to stop them catching. 
I'm going to position the first tab over the 50% mark on my ankle. Yes, you do have to have an ability to do a little bit of bending and you do have to still have some grip strength. So with this wrap, you would actually pull it to full stretch, apply over the ankle as so. And I'm just gonna do that again. Now with this wrap, pulling it to full stretch where it will lock out will ensure you get the correct compression. There are others that will have a little card that you can put there to measure the level of compression. Um, and there are others that actually you can apply one band across and they're colour coded. So again, it's, it's that looking at the patient's individual ability to be able to apply. The thing with this wrap is that because it's made to mimic a bandage, it's actually really quite thin and low profile, which means that it can be worn under most clothes. Um, and you can see here, just that, that ability to be able to, to do that myself. Um, and again, as the edema would reduce, would tighten those bands up, but you can just pop that back down there like so. So wraps are another really, really useful um, product for where patients are struggling with hosiery. Um, and again, for aiding management of edema and, and leg ulcers. So I'm just gonna pop this off. <laughs> Another few tips as well for where um, patients are struggling with compression is the use of reduced compression garments. So there are many reduced compression garments that are available. They're used mainly and indicated for nighttime use or for when resting. Um, but they're proving really useful for those patients that are struggling with application of traditional compression garments, do not tolerate those higher pressures, um, where you may be worried about the tissues um, being damaged or pressure damage where somebody's not moving around very much. So we, there are lots of reduced compression garments out there. They tend to give roughly 15 to 21 millimetres of mercury. So they are quite low and, and suitable to sleep in. But the thing about them is that they are very, very easy to don and doff. And you can see here, we've got one here. Now there are, again, there are some that have Velcro tabs on them. Uh, the majority of them just, you will slide them on over the limb, but they don't have the resistance um, the yarn resistance that you would have if it was a traditional compression garment. So you can see there, we've got quite low resistant yarns there compared to here. It's very difficult to pull. So very easy to get on and off. Um, this one allows to actually, it will sit nice on the tissues and still help reduce any limbs. But again, you can with this, do the same as you would with your normal hosiery, pull it inside out, or you could just slide it on. Oh, she says, up the leg. You can see here, this just slides on. And again, you don't, it, it's quite easy to apply on delicate tissues. Um, and again, some of the other um, reduced compression garments are quite useful where you've got delicate tissues or where Somebody's quite palliative. So that is another option. So there's many, many different options um, that you can use. Um, I would hope that I would exhaust as many different options as possible for my patients to find them something that's not only comfortable and aesthetically pleasing, but something that they can get on and get off. I think for us as therapists, we have a responsibility that we should ensure that we know about not only the compression products, but the different applicators available to enable patients to get things on and off. And we should also be mindful that we should really encourage 
if we can, to get family members involved in helping apply and um, take put on and take off hosiery, um, or where possible carers, because we wouldn't um, we wouldn't not promote our family or patients not taking their medication. So why should we think the same about think differently about compression hosiery or compression garments? Compression is a treatment, it's a prescribed treatment. Therefore, it shouldn't be omitted. Um, we need to find ways to address these challenges. And I think for, for us as clinicians, we should be at the forefront of that. That there is a lot out there that's available for, for people. Um, I've only shown you a few options today. There is, there is a, a million different things out there that you can use, but just some of those general tips, even just getting into this position, being in a position that you can apply little tips, definitely gloves, definitely gloves and grip mats um, are really useful to improve outcomes with compression. I hope that you found the session useful and um, we will be taking questions. Um, so, yeah, so yes, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you very much, Natalie. That was great. Um, it, it really is. Some of it seems so simple, but um, you're absolutely right that we need to take the responsibility to check out if somebody's not wearing their um, compression garments, why that is and how can we help them. Absolutely. And I think your um, informant, getting the family or carers involved is great, but sometimes the, it's also good to get them some kind of aid because it can make them more independent. Yeah. They can do it when they like, so absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite, great. Quite often, quite often I will um, bring in application aids just suggesting gloves even to those that do have good grip strength because it, it's just it just makes things a little bit easier i mean obviously those gloves are a little bit big for me but gloves that fit properly yeah. allowing you to just be able to redistribute your compression if you, if you feel that oh i'm gone that's that's not quite right um i think yeah Gloves are really useful. What, what about um, a question that's often asked immediately when you talk about uh, the different um, applicators and, and um, tools that you can use? Generally, are these things available in prescription? The, quite, uh, very many are. Um, I can't reel them off the top of my head. But yes, there's, there's variations. So some of the frame type ones are and a lot of the slidey sheet ones are i'm not too sure about the gloves um but again a lot one of the things i, I will say to a lot of my patients is you can pick up a pair of gloves from the garden center or the pound pound shop and the same for the grip mats um such as using the the grip that you would get to put on trays to stop drinks falling off or sliding yeah. around a tray. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there are sort of cheap and cheerful fixes that, yeah. that we could get. Yeah. Okay, there's some questions coming in now, Natalie. And um, somebody's saying that they have a gentleman um, who's wearing um, a compression garment. They've tried wraps, but he can't bend down to put them on, he lives alone. Any suggestions? Um, I would go down the look at possibly going down the route of one of the nighttime garments because they tend to be quite easier to get on. If if he's not um, able to have somebody in to possibly help um, or care as one of the other things that I actually completely forgot to mention during the presentation is that you can actually on some of the custom made garments have zips or um, Velcro straps or um, Velcro zippers applied um, that might help with donning and doffing. And I suppose if, if he could get down slightly, a lower 
classic compression garment to make it easier to get on. There's, there's lots of different things to consider, I think. Would you add anything? Uh, well, I was only going to say it's something else that people often ask is about, um, you mentioned going to a lower compression class. Would you ever advocate applying to lower yes. class? Yeah, yes, definitely. And, and uh, going back to my own clinical practice, uh, and I can think of a lady who was in her 80s, could not get a class two garment on, but had no issue with getting two class one garments on. Mm -hmm. And as much as that took it up to a little bit of a higher level of compression, it actually really maintained your edema fantastically. And because you, you've got two layers, it, it automatically becomes more rigid. So it's, as well as having that little bit higher pressure, it actually really helped contain the tissues. So yeah, quite often I would suggest double layering. Obviously we have to do our, our um, full assessment first and make sure that, that the patient's going to be okay with that, that there's no underlying condition that would stop me from doing that. But yeah, definitely. Okay, good. That's really helpful. Um, somebody's asking about how often people should have their compression garments replaced. Replaced in terms of a prescription replaced or applied? I, I think it's probably prescription replaced. Okay. Usually, I think most manufacturers um, have four to six months as, as their garment life. So compression should ideally be replaced every four to six months. Um, I would check with each individual manufacturer, but usually I think the CE marking for most of the compression that's available is four to six months. So, so yes. Um, usually what we do is if we've got somebody coming in um, yearly for reviews, then we make sure they've got enough compression to get them through that year. But yeah, just be aware it, it's only sort of guaranteed for four to six months. You want to comment on the changing in terms of the daily thing, in case it was? Okay. <laughs> um, so in, t in terms of changing hosiery, obviously for us, and, and you, you will be the same, Margaret, we advocate daily skincare at least. Um, so changing daily would, would be practical and, and best practice. However, we are all aware that we've got patients that will um, either not have anybody available to help them on a daily basis. Somebody might come in every other day and therefore they might only change their hosiery every other day. So I think it's about what works for, for the patient, but I wouldn't tend to advocate any more than every other day, um, eking that out to two, three or once a week. We need to be able to provide skincare and, and really look after the skin. And the thing is as well is that uh, washing and drying and cleaning between the toes and things to prevent things like athlete's foot, which will make the patient susceptible to cellulitis. Mm -hmm. um, so, so certainly, yeah, we'd, we'd have one for wash and one for wear and then alternate them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, since you've mentioned skincare, it's probably the worst just uh, commenting that um, it's better to wait a little while after applying cream before putting on your garments because that can make it harder um, to get them on but you don't want people to not put on their cream absolutely That's really important absolutely and a lot of the time I'll say to people is if you if you do remove your garments at night um, to pop your cream on later in the day rather than First thing yeah. in the morning when you're rushing to get your compression on and get out the door or, or yeah. yes, yes, yeah. It, it definitely does. Um, it reduces the, the, that ability for the compression to just slide across the skin, definitely. Yeah, yeah it's all about finding what works for particular individuals. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and everybody's so different. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Okay, there's one come in about um, uh, somebody's unable, not sure why, to get compression through their GP. Can they buy compression garments privately? Uh, yes, but certainly for, from our perspective, we would recommend that there is um, some not, not necessarily documentation that you've seen a therapist and been assessed Assessment. by a therapist yeah. uh, prior to that. Um, but yeah, the, I think many companies offer the, the ability for patients to to buy compression, but I wouldn't go off buying it just no. without no, any it, guidance. Yeah, it's important that to know what's the right style of compression, absolutely. whether it's flat and it, circular and, it, and the strength. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the, the type in terms of as much as you, you as a patient may sit there and think I've got a bit of ankle swelling, is that actually the therapist will be able to assess how far up the leg that actually extends um, and might be able to, because we're very used to palpating tissues and assessing tissues as quite often it will be oh actually you've got this going up above your knee and we need to put you in a thigh length garment or yeah um because yeah, so. yeah if if, um, if somebody's got swelling that goes beyond that um crease and beyond the knee there's no point in putting something in that's that's just going to make it worse above the knee yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah okay Okay, another interesting question, um, Natalie, and I'm not sure how much companies have thought of this, but any tips for patients with poor sight who wants to be independent with wraps? Oh, that is an interesting one. Um, and I, I've got lots of thoughts, <laughs> um, but I don't know whether to share them because actually we could go off and do something. <laughs> but Actually, I think we don't place enough emphasis on supporting our patients that have reduced sight, um, with, especially where wraps are concerned. So, so yeah, um, I'm not sure what to say there. <laughs> um, yeah. What would Obviously you some, say? They, They've got, um, I mean, the, the, the Velcro was if, feels different each each yeah. part of the, the velcro um yeah. certainly so, makes it easier but whether there could be something on on the different layers or not just by touch you could yeah. you could tell because, i'm not sure but i think that's that is a really good question yeah something i think, that I think that, all the companies should be yeah that being able to distinguish between have you got the wrap the right way up yeah um yes I think certainly from our perspective with our wraps is the shortest band goes at the ankle. So you'll be able to, I suppose, it will be a bit done by a touch, obviously, yes. to be able to feel that, that actually the, the band at the bottom is the narrowest band and the band at the top is, is the longest, not the narrowest, the shortest. Um, and that actually you apply the Velcro feeling, I'm just feeling without looking, yes. apply the, the side without the Velcro before you apply the Velcro. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, so thank you to the person who um, put that question up. It is something that I think we need to think about a bit more. Yes. yes. Um, uh, Someone else is saying, I find I can't wear open toe stockings as they tend to crease up my foot and ankle and give me pressure indentations. Do you have any tips for wearing open toe compression stockings or um, um, are closed toes better? Personally, from my personal preference, I always have closed toe stockings. And I just, for, for that, that reason, as much as companies are great in that they will make sure that the bands sit quite nice around um, the, the actual bony prominences of the foot. I think with, with using open toe, it's making sure that you've got that district, the fabric distributed properly over where you would have bunions, I suppose. Uh, but certainly for, from my perspective, 
my personal perspective is I prefer wearing closed toe garments. Mm -hmm. They just tend to sit nice um, on the on the feet. The other thing is as well is is that we do have some people that do want open toe garments but have toe swelling. So we would then suggest that they wear a toe cap under their open toe hosiery. And at times that that helps to sort of anchor, I suppose, the, the open part of the hosiery. Another tip may be to use some um, of the body glue. So we have compression hosiery glue. And again, many companies do that where they could just pop a little bit of glue on either side of, of the foot and glue the hosiery to the foot. But obviously you need to sort of patch test first and make sure that you're not gonna to react to the glue. I mean, the glues are body glue, so they, they tend to be quite gentle. Yeah. That would be what I'd suggest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes um, the assessment is that an uh, open toe would be preferable for some reason, but for most patients, they probably could um, get that. So yes, I think that's, your responses are being appreciated. Um, I don't see any more questions. Anybody want to ask Natalie anything else while she's here? No, nothing else coming in. So is there anything else you want to add? Oh, I just want to say thank you for taking the time for listening and thank you to, for being here as well, Margaret. Um, it's always great. Um, okay. Yeah. And legs matter to keep up the great work and the BLS. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think there's lots of information on the website uh, that people can go to after the session, but um, I think these simple tips um, can solve such a big problem. So thank you very much for, for the session, Natalie. Oh, thank you.